In this video tutorial, we're going to be discussing closed thermodynamic systems, and we're going to be looking at how we can apply the non-flow energy equation in order to find various different unknowns for the fluid. So pictured on the screen here, I have a sealed vessel, and the sealed vessel has a fixed volume. I've specified that we're going to apply heat, Q into the system, of 85 kilojoules, but we're not going to be doing any work on the fluid with it being a sealed vessel. We're assuming that the temperature of the fluid is 25 degrees C, and we have a specific heat capacity of constant volume of 718 joules per kilogram Kelvin. That value of specific heat capacity is for air. So within our container, we have air. We also have a mass of air of 1.2 kilograms. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to determine the change of internal energy of the air, and secondly, we're going to find the temperature of the air after it's been heated. So we're going to use the non-flow energy equation on the right hand side, first of all, Q plus W equals delta U. Now in previous videos, we discussed a convention whereby Q in or W in was positive and Q out or W out was negative. So in this instance, we have Q in of 85 kilojoules, therefore Q is positive. So we have 85 kilojoules plus the work done. Well, in this case, we're not doing any work on the system. So there's no work energy to add into the equation. And that's going to equal our change in internal energy. Therefore, the change in internal energy here is just 85 kilojoules. But what we can do next is we can use that solution in order to find the temperature of the air after it's been heated. So we have delta U equals mass times specific heat capacity at constant volume times the change in temperature. Well, the change in temperature is going to be T2, the temperature after heating, minus T1. So we have delta U, 85 kilojoules, we need to remember to work in SI units, equals the mass times the specific heat capacity of 718. T2 is a thing we're trying to find, minus T1 is 25. Next, we need to divide each side by 1.2 times 718. So this bracket here. And we're going to get T2 minus 25 equals 85,000 divided by 1.2 times 718. The final step then will be to add 25 to each side. So we'll get T2 equals 85,000 divided by 1.2 times 718 plus 25, which equals 123.65 degrees Celsius. So the temperature of the air after heating is 123.65 degrees C. We're going to look at another example, except this time we're going to apply work to the air as well as applying heat. Okay, so we're going to begin solving this problem in exactly the same way. The first thing that we need to do is calculate our change in internal energy. We have Q plus W equals delta U. This time we have heat in of 85 kilojoules, but we're also doing work on the air of 65 kilojoules. It's work in because we're compressing the air. Therefore, both our Q value and our W value are going to be positive. Q plus W equals delta U. Therefore, delta U this time equals 150 kilojoules. So once again, we want to calculate the temperature of the air after it's been heated and compressed. So if we take our second formula then, we have delta U equals mcv T2 minus T1. Now the only unknown here is T2. So the first thing I can do to each side is divide by m times cv. And I'll be left with delta U over mcv equals T2 minus T1. And then the next thing I need to do to each side to get T2 on its own is just add T1. So I get T2 
equals delta u over mcv plus t1. Inputting some values, we have 150 kilojoules for delta u, or 150,000, divided by a mass of 1.2, times a specific heat capacity at constant volume of 718, and to that we're adding the 25 degrees, giving us a T2 value this time equal to 199.09 degrees C. So we can see that the impact of doing work on the air as well as heating the air has actually increased its temperature quite significantly. So we're going to look at one more scenario and this time we're going to be doing work on the air, so we're going to be compressing the air, but this time instead of heating the air, heat energy is actually going to be lost from the system. Okay, so a couple of things to know. This time, heat's leaving the system, Q out. And as we've mentioned previously, if heat or work's leaving the system, then we need to make sure we include that as a negative value. It's coming out of the system. So if we return to our non-flow energy equation on the right-hand side, we have Q plus W equals delta U. But this time, Q needs to be negative. The heat energy is leaving the system. So we have minus 22 plus the work, the work's still being put into the system, so that's still positive, and that we set equal to delta U. Therefore, in this case, delta U equals 43 kilojoules. So as we said before, in order to calculate T2, we have the following formula. T2 equals delta U over MCV plus T1, and so in this instance we have T2 equals 43 kilojoules, so 43,000, divided by our mass of 1.2 times our specific heat capacity at constant volume, 718, plus T1, 25 degrees, giving us a T2 value this time equal to 74.91 degrees Celsius. So this time, because heat's leaving the system, the final temperature of our air is considerably lower. So a couple of key things to remember, when heat or work is being done on the system, then Q and W will be positive, and if heat or work are leaving the system, then Q and W must have negative values. The change in internal energy of the gas is the sum of the heat energy in plus the work done on the fluid.